Dedication of a Memorial to the Armenian Genocide at Great Park. Okay, for those attending in person who would like to speak, please submit your name into the speaker kiosk. Those participating via Zoom may raise their hand electronically. And before I ask staff to introduce themselves, um, I will turn to Vice Mayor Kim, who requested this item be agendized. Okay, now I know. Okay. Um, I'd like to thank members of the Armenian community of the Armenian National uh, Committee of American OC who reached out, um, who have been advocating for this. Um, I, I do support this. I'd like to see this uh, move forward and would, um, I'll hold the rest of my comments for staff presentation, but, but thank you. Thank you. And will the appropriate staff please introduce themselves and proceed with the staff report. Good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, and City Council members. My name is Andrew Douglas, and I'm an analyst on the Great Park team. I'm joined by Pete Cartmichael, Great Park Executive Director. Earlier this month, Vice Mayor Kim requested that City Council consider the potential dedication of a memorial to the Armenian Genocide at Great Park. To facilitate Council's discussion, Staff coordinated with SWA, the landscape architecture firm, working on the framework plan to identify potential locations and conceptual reference images for such a memorial. Two locations at Great Park stand out for a potential memorial. The first is the Ford forested area adjacent to the Great Meadow. This space is planned to include tall trees, a literary garden, and a meditation garden. As such, it would provide a quiet and contemplative setting for a memorial. The second potential location is along the walkable historical timeline. This existing park feature marks important world events and would allow the memorial to be considered within its historic context. A memorial could take a variety of forms or utilize a range of materials. These images depict existing Armenian genocide memorials from around the world, including Philadelphia on the left, Armenia, uh, the second to the right, and Belgium furthest over to the right. The samples show how sculpture and engraved stone markers can be integrated into a design. There are also precedents for memorials utilizing less traditional forms and materials, such as this example from Los Angeles, which emphasizes the impact of lighting. Memorials can also incorporate natural forms and features, such as this example from Connecticut. Here, the memorial is integrated with the landscape, including a garden and reflecting pond. If directed to proceed with the memorial, staff will coordinate with representatives of the local Armenian American community to gather feedback on a conceptual design. Staff will also prepare construction cost estimates for city council to consider. It is anticipated the cost of the memorial would be included within the budget for phase one of the framework plan. Additionally, staff has learned that there are procedures in place at Central Park, the National Mall, and other large public spaces to evaluate and consider proposals for new memorials. Staff plans to develop a similar procedure that can be used to evaluate future requests at Great Park and to return to the board with a draft process for consideration. And with that, we conclude our presentation and turn discussion over to City Council. We're available to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. I'll turn it over to my colleagues for any comments or questions at this time. Are, are we having public comment? Yes. First? Okay. After we have, a, it's the same routine. So if you don't have any comments, then we go to public comment. Uh, I'll wait for okay. public comment. So we will now consider public testimony. City Clerk, will you please provide the number of requests to speak? Thank you, Mayor. We have six requests to speak. Okay. So each speaker will be um, limited to three minutes. And as a reminder, requests to speak submitted after the first speaker's call shall receive 90 seconds. Uh, we will first consider public testimony by those attending in person, um, followed by those on Zoom. So when I call your name, please come down um, by the city clerk. Nishan Dolgarian, Garo Madenlian, Dr. Kev Abazajian, Haig Balian. And we'll start with Nishan Dolgarian. Good evening, Madam Mayor and members of the City Council. My name is Nishan Tulgarian. I'm an Irvine resident and a federal retiree with extensive service 
in our nation's capital, to the law enforcement community, as well as the U.S. Navy. I'm also the son of a genocide survivor. I mean genocide survivor. The long forgotten, unrecognized genocide. Had the Western world, when this genocide was in progress, recognized the existence, um, the Holocaust would not have taken place. Neither some of the uh, recent uh, genocides in the recent memory that took place in different parts of the globe, unfortunately. That still continues. I hope this initiative by the city is realized in the very near future, not only to memorialize, memor memorialize the, the victims of my ancestors, but also other victims who have never been recognized. This memorializing and uh, praying place eventually will become the center of our spiritual needs every April 24 army and community throughout the United States uh, remembers their ancestral uh, members of their ancestors, how they perished. So if there is a hope that we can get together at this site that the city is planning to realize, hopefully in the very near future, I think we'll owe the city council a big thank you. I wish you good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Gero Madenlian. Good evening. Good evening, Mayor and Council Members. Uh, my name is Gado Madenlian. I'm with the Armenian Cultural Foundation of Orange County. I'm the chair and also with the ANCA of Orange County. Um, First of all, I'd like to thank you, Vice Mayor Kim, for putting this item on the agenda, um, along with Council Member Treasurer. Thank you very much. Um, I'd also like to thank um, Vice Mayor Kim for attending our commemoration event last year, community-wide event that was also attended by Council Member Larry Agron, who spoke beautifully and passionately. Thank you for that as well and for joining us that evening. It's <clears throat> I'm very happy that this is a standalone agenda item, and I want to explain why briefly. Um, it was about a year ago today, roughly, that I was here speaking on different, during different circumstances, um, when the Armenian community was singled out. And so I think it's appropriate that at this time, the council addresses this is issue as a single item, standalone agenda, uh, and directs the city staff or the Great Park Committee, where whoever the appropriate entity is, to work with the Armenian community on this project. It was last year where we came and we made our voices heard. We were upset, rightfully so. Um, and then we, you responded and we heard you and we listened. Um, and whether in private or in public, on the record or off the record, Everyone who was here, everyone that I had spoken to or seen uh, communications with expressed their solidarity and support regarding the Armenian genocide and its recognition efforts and to never forget, to always remember, and to never let it happen again. And now it's an opportunity to take those words and give them true meaning uh, by turning those words into action. And this is one of those ways. It's a great step to doing that. And we commend uh, this step. Uh, we hope that this will be a unanimous decision by the council, um, by the council of the great city of Irvine, uh, because the Armenian genocide should be remembered, it shouldn't be forgotten, um, it shouldn't be repeated. Right now it's happening again in a region called Artsakh, where 120,000 Armenians are blockaded for over 75 days, starving, no supplies, no medical Last month, in a city in a neighboring county, there were stickers posted about wiping Armenians off the face of the earth. They're investigating. Um, this will be a great step forward for the city of Irvine. Our community is prepared to work together. We had a meeting yesterday, and we're ready to have a representative you, committee to work together with the city staff. 
once the city determines that we're going to have this memorial. Thank you. Okay, Bob Azadjian. Hello, Mayor, uh, Council Members. Uh, my name is Dr. Kev Avazajian. I am a professor of physics and astronomy at UC Irvine. I am also a, uh, a member of the Green Urban Environmental Committee, I'm a, a commissioner on the Transportation Commission. I am the recorder secretary for the Knights of Artan uh, here, a chapter in Orange County. And I'm also a, a member of the ANCA, Armenian International Committee of America of Orange County. And I'm not going to speak on behalf of any of those entities. I'm here to speak as an Irvine resident and as a uh, descendant of survivors of the Armenian Genocide. Uh, my grandfather uh, was, um, fled the genocide and had to leave his elderly father behind uh, when escaping with his mother. And he never connected with them again. He was presumably killed in the genocide. My great-grandmother, on the other side, uh, lost her first husband in the genocide, as well as her very young son, and was separated from her very young daughter for 50 years, until in the 1960s she was re reunited with her daughter in Bulgaria. That great-grandmother was, she recreated her life with a new husband, a new family, which is my family, um, and uh, was one of the most positive and joyful people, members of my family, because she embodied the joy of being able to be with family, to treasure every moment that you have with those that you love. And that kind of resilience is what this kind of memorial will signify, is the Armenian community's resilience after this genocide. Um, and I don't mean that this memorial should be for my family. It should be for the one and a half million souls that were lost in the genocide, uh, for all of them to remember them. And so I ask for you to signify uh, this uh, memorial as a special designation uh, because the city of Irvine will stand behind uh, recognizing this atrocity, and uh, also recognize it because it is a special genocide. It is the first of the modern era and should be recognized as in its special place for that as well. So thank you, and I, I hope this is unanimously supported today. Thank you. Um, Haig Valian. Good evening, Mayor Khan. Vice Mayor Kim, council members. My name is Haig Balyan. I'm the commander of the Orange County Lodge of the Knights of Vartan, a fraternal brotherhood formed in Philadelphia in 1918 to protect and help survivors of the Armenian Genocide. We are one of 20 Amer American Armenian organizations active in Orange County that range from cultural, educational, religious, and athletics. Near and dear to us, is the UC Irvine Armenian Studies Program and the 100 plus members of the Armenian Student Association. We are growing in numbers as we unify. Young and old, we are proud Americans whose ancestors have contributed much to America out of great appreciation of our freedom and liberty. My father ran for Congress and was an influential politician. Hardly a week would ever go by that he would say, America is the greatest country in the world. As rich and wonderful Armenian culture was during our upbringing, the dark cloud of the genocide was always overhead. In remembrance of our family members lost at the hands of the Ottoman Turks from the years 1915 to 1923. The Armenian genocide was, is, and will always be one of the darkest chapters in human history. April 24th is the day we commemorate the genocide when there are many major gatherings that take place from a rally in Times Square to downtown Los Angeles where thousands march in unity in protest and of course the capital of Armenia, Yerevan, where a huge memorial stands in Central Park. It is only fitting that such a memorial is constructed in the Great Park in the heart of the largest Armenian diaspora. 
The Orange County Armenian community has many talented professionals, including architects and engineers that are eager to contribute and celebrate and collaborate towards this special project. Thank you. Thank you. This time it is, um, I'll turn it back to my colleagues for any further discussion. Madam Mayor, I do have speakers on Zoom. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Uh, our first speaker is Eric Nishanian, followed by Harvey Liss. Mr. Nishanian, you may unmute your mic. Yes, good evening, council members, Mayor Khan, Eric Nishanian. I do not belong to any of the Armenian organizations that have uh, promoted this uh, resolution. Uh, these organiza organizations do not represent me. You do not represent these organizations. I've been Irvine resident for 20 years. This dais, these council chambers, and the city is still blemished by genocide denial. This resolution and this memorial does not uh, erase that blemish. You cannot reconcile a memorial with Vice Mayor Kim endorsing Mayor Khan after it was revealed that Mayor Khan was enabling Muslim nationalists, not necessarily fascists, but Muslim nationalists, and definitely genocide deniers. You cannot reconcile this resolution and memorial with Mayor Khan being put on the wall of recognition after it was revealed that she was connected to Muslim nationalists and genocide deniers. You cannot reconcile this resolution and this memorial with the image of Ataturk being displayed at city events and private schools in Irvine and at uh, uh, Irvine parks. Um, Mayor Khan still won't admit that the Turkish Delight video was not fabricated, which is an insult on all Armenian Americans, saying that we are somehow liars, or somehow uh, uh, misrepresented uh, uh, what she said. She said what she said. We know what she said. She said what she said about Azerbaijan. She said what she said about fighting hate against Azerbaijanis in, in California, which does not exist. She said a lot of things. She's a liar. She's a racist and she stabs people in the back. And it, rather than uh, uh, making a memorial, perhaps we should recognize that Armenians actually exist. You can't even reconcile this with the We Are Irvine propaganda that has Turkish language on it. So that you recognize living Turks, but now you're recognizing that me and my ancestors are dead. I'm alive. Garo has never contacted me. He's not a citizen of Irvine. Kev has been a citizen, citizen of Irvine since 2011. Rather than contacting me, he tried to stab me in the back. None of you on the council have ever contacted me. I'm a resident here. I'm your neighbor. I don't feel safe. Mayor Khan has endangered Armenians here. She's endangered other people here. You guys don't aware, uh, are not aware of that, and you don't have the courage to stand up. Once again, I ask you, do you see an adult in the room? Recognize my heritage. Recognize that I'm alive. Recognize that there's at least 100,000 Armenians here in Southern California that contribute to the community that are, are productive. Thank you, Mr. Nishani, and your time is up. Our next speaker is Harvey Liss, followed by Jeremy Ficarola. Harvey, you may unmute your mic. Good evening, Irvine Mayor and City Council. I think it's terrific that we're considering a memorial to the Armenian Genocide but without diminishing that recognition, I think we ought to make a memorial that also recognizes perhaps other genocides too. Certainly what distinguishes the Armenian genocide and also the Holocaust is that they both have large Ur uh, uh, community in Irvine, residents who are familial descendants of both genocides and both genocides have active deniers in our community as well, which I think should give them much higher priority. And there may be Irvine residents who are descendants of other genocides too. And this is not just ancient news. The Armenian genocide has continued into virtually current history with the massacre of Artsakh in 2020 that's effectively ongoing. And the 2017 massacre in Rohingya that is also effectively ongoing. I think a memorial should also have a significant educational component, not just a statue or a garden. And by the way, Wikipedia lists 41 genocides, some of which seem uh, are from ancient times. Thank you. 
Our next speaker is Jeremy Ficarola, followed by Doug Elliott. Mr. Ficarola, you may unmute your mic. You have 90 seconds. Yeah, um, yeah. Hi there, uh, City Council. Um, I, I definitely support uh, this monument uh, being placed in in Great Park. Um, I think it's really important to to honor and recognize and and to educate, um, not just you know, not well, not just to honor Armenians, but to educate non-Armenians. Um, I'm not from Armenian, you know, I don't have any Armenian background. And I actually learned about the horrors of, of the Armenian genocide when I was in college, not in class, but from meeting other Armenian people. And I, it's just simply not taught enough in schools in, in, in the United States. Um, and so this would be one way that we could educate, not just Armenian and, and to honor the Armenian families, but to educate those who are non-Armenian uh, to understand what happened uh, and, you know, uh, so I, I definitely support uh, I definitely support this monument, and it still is an episode. It's not that it's not that it didn't happen that long ago. There's still a few. It's maybe only a few generations removed, where family members are still have been uh, impacted and affected uh, by the genocide. So I think this is definitely a great move to honor the Armenian genocide. And personally, uh, my background I've, I'm a former asylum refugee officer. So I've interviewed many refugees um, fleeing their countries from humanitarian strife. Thank you, Mr. Ficarola. Your time is up. Our next speaker is Doug Elliott. Mr. Elliott, you may unmute your mic. You have 90 seconds. Thank you, Doug Elliott, once again. I didn't have any prepared remarks on this item, but uh, seeing the previous speakers, I thought it was important important not only to stand in solidarity with them, but to let it be known that it's not only Armenian Americans who care about this issue. And I think the last two speakers before me have kind of highlighted that point, but uh, I want to stress that. Uh, I uh, particularly want to stand in solidarity with my friend Kev Abazajian, who has been very passionate on this issue uh, for a long time. Uh, I was sorry to hear him attacked by a previous speaker. Um, Kev is a man of integrity and I support him. I stand by him and uh, I support this, uh, this proposal. Thank you. And that is all, Mayor. Thank you. I'll turn it back over to my colleagues, um, starting with Vice Mayor Kim. Thank you. <clears throat> um, thank you for all who came to um, to add your support and to testify on this. Uh, I do feel it's an educational opportunity for our residents. Uh, clearly, I'm not Armenian, um, but that of the Armenian genocide um, and the pain suffered is universal. And the pain is universal. And, and we're all humans and um, and I think with our with our community and with the amount of um, land we have, um, that's very rare. I felt that it was important to provide a space um, for contemplation and education. Uh, I think it's important that we work with the Armenian community to come up with, and, and this is what's important to me. I don't think this this should necessarily be city-led. This needs to be community-led uh, because the community knows uh, what it needs, um, whether from an aesthetic perspective or, or what message it wants to send. Um, you know, I, I know I can speak for some of the memorials that I'm more familiar with, um, the uh, Vietnam war memorial at the Sid Goldstein Freedom Park that was um, designed, architected, um, and um, um, sponsored by the Vietnamese community or, um, you know, the Korean community um, with, with support from Glendale. The city of Glendale put a comfort woman statue that was, you know, clearly designed by 
by Koreans. Um, the Korean community helped pay for it, but the city of Glendale um, had this space and dedicated this space for it um, and also protected it as well. Um, and, uh, you know, we have the Korean War Memorial. Um, again, the, the Korean community raised money, worked on the design, um, and it was, bec the, the land itself was um, um, donated by the city of Fullerton. And so I think it's going to be really important that um, whatever we do is, is really working with the, hand in hand with the community. Um, and so uh, really what, what, I, what I hope to accomplish today is that, uh, you know, we, the council, provide staff with the direction to move forward, to uh, gather that community engagement, to making, to making sure that whatever we have is, is definitely um, working in strong, with, with the community in strong partnership with something that is meaningful um, to them and that could help, you know, educate me and, and my colleagues alike. And, and our all of our residents and, and everyone throughout Orange County. Thank you, uh, Council Member Treceder. Yeah, thank you. So I appreciate the speakers coming here and, and sharing your stories. Um, I'm pleased to be supporting this memorial. Uh, there are two goals I think it will accomplish. One is that it will support the Armenian community here, which is important um, as we heard the genocide um, in the early 1900s may seem far away, but in terms of generational trauma, it is still very close. And the people who are alive today are thinking of their great grandmothers or their grandmothers who experienced these atrocities. Um, so I'd love to have something to really communicate that the, the city cares about them. The second thing is education. And I, I have to admit, I didn't know about the Armenian genocide until you know, very recently. I didn't learn about it in school. And I don't want that to be the case going forward. You know, the Armenian genocide had consequences for much of the future of Europe and the United States. Um, one of the main reasons is because there was a through line, right, from the Armenian genocide to the Holocaust. You know, when Hitler was talking about his plans for the Holocaust, he said, um, yeah, I think that I can get away with it because who, after all, today still speaks of the annihilation of the Armenians. So I think it's very important, um, looking back at that history, to recognize how important it is to be still speaking of the annihilation of the Armenians. We can't forget about it. Um, we, we need to make sure that this doesn't happen again. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, with that, uh, I'll turn it over to Vice Mayor. Would you like to make a motion? Uh, yes, I'd like to um, move staff to uh, to um, work regarding potential memorial um, to the Armenian Genocide at the Great Park. I'll Vice Mayor that. Kim, if uh, possible, would it be um, appropriate to um, request that staff also or allow staff also to develop a process through which additional memorials might be contemplated. Um, we heard tonight there were some other um, requests for remembering atrocities um, in addition to the Armenian genocide. Um, we think at the staff level, having a process that's defined to engage these type of requests in the future probably makes some sense. Y yes, we can. Um, I, I don't have an issue with that. Um, but I also want to make sure that um, we do have a standalone a memorial to Armenian genocide and that it's not Thank glumped you. together with all genocide. No, absolutely. Um, because, I mean, if that's the case, we can talk about the, the cultural eradication of the Koreans by the Japanese. I mean, I could, we could go on and on. Um, and right now, I, I, I really want to make sure that um, we, we keep our attention and focus um, for that, but yet in addition, additionally, Correct. have a process. Okay. Excellent. All right, so we have a motion. Oh, oh Council Member Agrin. Yes, Mayor. Uh, I'd like to speak to the motion and also 
to the back and forth um, between uh, Vice Mayor Kim and our city manager. Um, let, let me um, say a few things here because um, I've given this, this matter a lot of thought. Um, this business of process, it's not a stall. It's actually, I think, essential to making this um, initiative um, successful. No one said it was a stall. Uh, excuse me. May I speak, please, without interruption? I think it's very important that we get this right because if I heard the staff report correctly, it's pretty much been decided or there is an emerging consensus um, that you communicated to us that this installation will be at the Great Park, which I think is appropriate, just intuitively, I think it's appropriate. You mentioned two locations in the Great Park. Um, you mentioned first the um, forested area. Uh, how did you describe it precisely? That's correct, Council Member. Uh, it's a forest that would be adjacent to the Great Meadow in the heart of the park. In the heart of the park, which is really quite ill-defined at this moment. I mean, we're going to be giving definition to it over time. <clears throat> um, you also mentioned the timeline, which, of course, as you referenced it, is an, a walkable historical timeline stretching over, I guess, thousands of years, certainly many hundreds of years. And itself makes reference to the Holocaust and other horrific events of human history that in one way, directly or indirectly, is all relevant to our own community here because of the consequences of that history and those events. Council Member uh, Kim, in her motion, uh, spoke about standalone. I think we need to think this through just a little bit. Obviously, if this is the first memorial that, of its kind, that would be in the Great Park, we ought to begin to think through where within the Great Park we want this and what will be the process by which this memorial is designed, located, designed, installed, and to the extent that it requires maintenance and care over time. How is all that going to be organized? Council Member Kim mentioned uh, the other horrific events of human history that are very meaningful to this community. And we will get proposals from others. There's absolutely no question in my mind you're going to hear from the Jewish community and others regarding the Holocaust. You're going to hear probably from the Cambodian community um, about Pol Pot and the genocide there. 
the case of the comfort women, which was recognized, that's a, a term for the sexual enslavement, essentially, of forces of the Japanese Imperial Army, another horrific event in human history. Our own bombing of Nagasaki and Hiroshima, some might, it's always been great debate as to whether that's a crime against humanity, but what do these all have in common? They all have in common that civilians, innocent people, by the tens of millions over time, have been victimized by genocides and lesser crimes against humanity. The rape of Nanking, our own American experience, the genocide of American Indians. I mean, communities are going to come forward and they are going to ask for recognition and a place in our great park. And I think we need to be kind of prepared for that. So we need to give this some thought. So the last point that was made by Councilmember Kim and that the city manager said, yes, yes, this is just standalone. No, I think we've got to think about this a little bit. And while the Armenian genocide is the first um, memorial installation that we're being asked to put in the Great Park, and we want to be responsive to that. We want to be thinking about the appropriate context, all kinds of questions that arise in that connection, which brings me to kind of a procedural point. Whatever we do tonight, and I assume we're going to vote in favor of the motion, this matter should be referred next step, like for the next council, for the next uh, Great Park board meeting. It should be referred to the Great Park. This is going to be something that the Great Park board, which is after all just us, that we ought to be giving consideration to at our Great Park board meeting. And if we're going to get involved, as we will, with identifying a location, not just for the Armenian Genocide Memorial, but also for other memorials that are sure to come our way, I think that conversation needs to be had at the Great Park board meeting level as well. That's not a detour. I regard it as kind of an essential step going forward if we're going to plan this, create a process. There's going to be a lot of controversy associated with each and every installation, even internal. I mean, think about it. How many different ideas might there be as to what kind of installation would be appropriate for the Armenian genocide? Um, they're going to be within the Armenian, within the Armenian community within the larger Irvine community, within the broader Southern California community, all kinds of different ideas. I don't know who is actually going to, there will no doubt be significant inscription, something telling the story of what transpired. Who's going to write that? There's going to be a lot of dispute. It's going to be very hard to get it organized and build consensus. 
but I think we've got to think about a process that will address all of those things. And might that effectively delay the installation of something for an extra six months or a year or a year and a half? Um, probably, but this kind of an installation is going to be there forever. We want a memorial that's going to stand forever and that really reflects a process and a product that is reflective of the best that we can do by way of pulling together a program to memorialize uh, these horrific events. So those are my thoughts. I'm supportive of your motion, uh, Council Member Kim, but I want our staff to be thinking in broader terms and I do want us to be giving additional thought to this right away at the Great Park Board. And I would like to see, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, I'd like to see this matter on the agenda for the next Great Park Board meeting. And then we can begin to talk there too about the process that the staff has in mind to move all this forward as expeditiously as possible. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Council Member Carroll. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Mayor. Um, very briefly, I just want to first um, thank uh, my colleagues for putting this on the agenda. Um, it's a very somber um, topic to be thinking about. And I also want to thank the members of our community that came before us both you know, online and here in person to share you know, personal family stories. It's uh, very meaningful uh, and, and to do such a thing and very courageous. And um, <clears throat> this is a uh, you know, very, very serious topic. I am fully supportive of the motion. I appreciate the idea of a process, uh, this being first in line in that process for sure. Um, so I just wanted to say that and, and thank everyone um, for for the participation and, and just say uh, whatever this is born of if this is something the really positive that can come from it it's a real step forward um, it really is like we were saying earlier with you know some of the other things we've been working on government you know really doing what government should be doing so thank you mayor thank you uh, vice mayor Kim yes. just just Again, real quick, um, thank you. Uh, I, I hope to gain all your support um, for this. Uh, again, not for myself at all, but for our community. And you know, just please note that the motion before us here does take into account uh, a process um, in having staff come up with a, a process for not just this particular one, but for subsequent mm -hmm. um, requests as they come from the community. Yeah. Pursuant to the motion, Vice Mayor Kim, we, we would certainly um, engage the uh, proponents of the Armenian Genocide Memorial in a discussion on how to, in parallel, um, in advance a concept for consideration by the Great Park Board and City Council. Right. Okay, thank you. Um, with that, City Clerk, uh, will you please conduct a roll call vote? Councilmember Agron. Yes. Councilmember Carroll. Yes. Councilmember Treceder. Yes. Vice Mayor Kim. Yes. Mayor Khan. Yes. Carries five zero. Thank you.